Hi there, welcome back to the channel and welcome to a new little project. This one is a 3D printing one supplied and sponsored by PCBWay. Thank you PCBWay for your support. I've received uh, 3D prints from PCBWay before. That's another one of the services they provide and this time I use them to uh, produce this. Now what is this? Well this is actually a module for my undershelf test gear set of modules and the reason is I wanted to standardize it. I wanted to make it simpler so that uh, anybody who wants to reproduce this can do it themselves. Whether you print them yourself or order them from PCBWay, it's up to you. I will leave the links to this uh, project on the share section on the PCBWay website. The design that I've come up with has the usual uh, side covers, which uh, fit like this. Is that right? No, like this. And these actually clip in, so you don't really need to stick them. But it's also got something else, and this is the real big difference from the ones I've done before. This thing here is what's going to hold it under the shelf. So each one of these, each one of these modules will have one of these things, which is the sort of the uh, clamp that clamps it under the shelf and allows you to slide it in. I'll show you how it goes on the shelf in a moment. And then the back can get screwed in to also on the under shelf so it sticks underneath there nicely and then of course you've got to make the holes and do the artwork which i've also done for a module that i want to replace right now and i'll be showing you each step of the way how i do that because i've had a lot of people asking me to make this available now this is as available as i'm going to get because i do not want to sell these things but you're free to uh, take these plans and do with them what you will i encourage the uh, diy route i'm certainly not interested in starting a little selling operation. I just don't have the time or the uh, infrastructure to be able to do that effectively. Now you'll see that I've got quite a few of these modules and they are becoming a little bit disordered. I like uh, these things to look the same. I want them to fit nicely. And because I've changed in my production method, I started doing 3D printing. I stopped liking the way they look and the way they fit together. And it was all becoming a little bit of a mess. And so I decided to make this whole thing uniform. That's why I designed uh, these modules to be 3D printed. Say hello to one of my new best friends, Fusion 360. This thing is amazing. This is where I model all the 3D uh, stuff that I need to print. And this is our uh, module. Now let's just close a few things up here and I'll show you the basics. This is the basic module shape. And of course, the way I've done it is um, I've given it a length of 12 centimeters, 120 millimeters by 65 high. 65 is sort of just a traditional convention because my original modules were 65 and a lot of the, the innards are designed for that height. So far, I haven't had a problem. What I have had a problem with is the width. So this 120 here, from there to there, I can just extend it more if I want. Obviously, I then, you know, would, uh, export another model and print it separately. But anyway, that's the way it's done. I've also made the walls slightly thicker. Some of the ones that I'd printed, I used, uh, I think I did it one and a half millimeters. This is two and a half millimeters. And the reason is that previously I had printed a, a faceplate with all the text and the holes and all that stuff. And in this particular iteration of these modules, I'm not going to use that. I'm going to use a, uh, a stick on a version. It's printed. I will show you that as well. I designed it on uh, a drawing program. I printed out on uh, self-adhesive um, sheets, white sheets. It allows me to put color on. It allows me to put all the markings. It's actually a lot more refined when it comes to doing the text because the text when printed was not coming out the way I wanted. The logo can be done the way I like it and so on and so forth. But here we are. This is the basics. We've got these little indents over here. You can see one there, one there, same on the other side. There's one on this side as well. And that is for the sides to clip in, to sort of snap in and allow you to um, click them in without having to glue them. Then the idea is to snap this or slide this into a, a slide that goes across here. And that is this thing over here, the shelf lip. So that lip, is designed for you to put under the shelf, just um, recessed back just as much as you need for this to 
to be flush with the front and you would screw that into the undershelf. It'll have one of these for each module. So you won't have, you won't be stuck with, um, with a, with a long one that I had before. This thing used to be all the way across and it was just a, a sheet of, a strip of aluminium and I had to put a spacer to create this height over here. So this uh, will be designed and printed at the same time as the module. This is what it looks like by itself. So you see that, okay. And there's a bit more height here to give it some rigidity and it all fits nicely there. And there is space over there. So there is um, some leeway because you do want this to slide in. You don't want it to be too loose, but you don't want it to be incredibly tight so you can't uh, slide the things into there. And then of course, there are the side panels. And the side panels were designed, uh, I designed one and then flipped it, and you've got one on each side. I actually realized after finishing this that I didn't have to have this, this bottom thingy down here. This could have just gone back there because these, this frame or this ruler, this uh, clamp doesn't go across anymore. It used to. And I had to make this go down so that it would uh, allow the, the lid to go on. And then I decided to leave it like this because in some cases these mod modules are connected together like the the bench uh, the workshop amplifier is connected to the dummy load switcher and it would be convenient to be able to pass the wires over the top it won't be visible from the front which is here but you still have a little bit of space and you can pass them over the top and that's basically it there's our model and now, I'm going to make a lot of things available on this. As I said, I want this to be DIY. I'm going to make the uh, Fusion file available. I'm going to create a Google Drive and it'll be linked below and it will have the uh, Fusion 360 file, this particular file, so that you can open it up, you can stretch it, you can do whatever you like with it and, uh, you know, create your own uh, specific models, modules, if you, if you like. I'll also have each of these units will be, um, I will give to you in separate STL files, so 3D print files. I'll do it in STL, I'll do them separately. So there'll be that one, there'll be that one, and there'll be these two. And then we come to creating the faceplate, and the faceplate I've done completely different this time. I'm not using Fusion 360, I'm actually using um, something equivalent to Adobe Illustrator. Let me show you the one that I'm going to do now and then I will, uh, I've printed it out and I'll show you how this whole thing sticks together. So here's one of my other best friends. This is Affinity Designer 2. It's equivalent to Adobe Illustrator, but it's a hell of a lot cheaper. And you can use any um, vector type drawing program to do this. This is done to scale. You can see two units here. I'm going to use, I'm going to do one. I'll do the Arlic uh, receiver first because I've found that that one is looking the most messed up right now. And I've actually got a few more. Let's see if I hide that one and that one. I've got two more here. I've got the dummy load one ready. I've got the workshop amplifier one ready. So I think you can see the idea. I'm trying to make them all uniform in terms of the logo, the spacing, the, the, the typeface. The warnings are the same in cases where it's applicable. And in all these, it is. There's actually a frame around here, very fine gray, but it is there. So I can now just uh, use the same file and just create different sets of um, layers for the different modules. And then I can hide that away and print the one I want. And um, what I do is I print this on a white self-adhesive paper. You can buy it. It's white. Uh, the one I've got is actually glossy. It's for laser printers and you pull the, you peel the back off and it sticks beautifully. But before I do that, I actually print this on normal A4 white paper, just so that I can put this on the front and mark the holes. Because in this case, if I use one of these modules that I've ordered and that I've uh, designed and, and I'm sharing the drawings for, there are no holes on the faceplate. So the idea is you treat this as a normal enclosure where you will mark the holes. These are for two little LEDs. You just make a hole there, drill it through. And then when you stick the final one over it, you have to cut the holes out. So those are two LEDs. These are two banana sockets. That's another LED. That's a switch. But I'll show you that now and um, I'll show you how I apply it and we'll see what the final result looks like. All right, folks. 
First mistake, my mistake. <laughs> when I designed these guys, I'd made them 10 centimeters wide. So um, these modules are 12. This thing's not going to fit exactly, but I've cut it 12. I'm going to make the holes. I'm going to actually stick the faceplate on, although the faceplate has also got a little fine line down here on the where it measures 10 centimeters. So I'm going to do it for the purposes of showing you the result. And later on, I'm going to have to print another one and stick it on again. Okay, so I've cut this to 12 wide. I'm going to create a bend on the bottom section here. And I can rest it like that. And now I'm going to tape it. Make sure that it doesn't move so that I can mark the holes. Let's do that. It's got to be very, very straight here or you mess it up. Yeah, looks good. Now, at the top, that line should be on the bend as well, and it seems to be okay. So I'm going to give it a bit more tape here. I think we're good. So now I'm going to use this punch and just punch the holes. This isn't very accurate, is it? Oh, ow, that didn't work too well. This is why I don't want to do it on the final product. I could probably just drill it. This is pretty rough. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six holes. That's what we've got to drill. And then I will check the dimensions of those holes to fit the appropriate. Uh, it's actually scratched here. These two are LEDs and that one as well, three millimeters. That's a switch and these are two um, RCA sockets. So let me get that done and I'll get right back to you. The drilling is done. It, um, it's actually quite useful to drill this with a slow drill because this is um, PETG. You can also use PLA, but uh, obviously this is plastic. So if your drill heats that up too much, it does tend to sort of start um, combining like melting. So I drill this very slowly, but it came out well. Now it's a question of getting the final faceplate sticker on and we'll see what it looks like. So here we are. I stuck it on and obviously, as I mentioned, I have to remove it and put it on again because this line was drawn to the 10 centimeters, not the 12. So it missed by one centimeter on both sides, unfortunately. But this is the idea. It sticks on. I stick it around here. What I've done is I've put in the sockets, the switches and the LEDs temporarily. You can see that there. The original is actually over here. And I'll be taking all that out and putting it in here once I have this faceplate issue, the printing sorted out. So I just put it on pretty roughly just to give you an idea. And I like it. I like it. You see, I can get the logo the way I want it in the font that I want, the colors that I want. I can make all the switches and LEDs uniform. Up is off, down is on, and the power light comes on. And then in this case, we've got a uh, RCA left out and RCA right out. And that's it. That's it. And now this thing goes on here. I put it on the shelf. I screw that to the top or to the under the shelf. I have to shift it back because I want this front to be flush with the edge of the shelf. And, um, and then once I slip this in, I can then put another screw or two at the back just to make sure it stays on. That is my under shelf unit. And unfortunately, yeah, I don't like things halfway, but I have to redo this. What a pity. <laughs> it's not so much the effort, it's just that I wanted to finish it now and I'm going to have to wait because I do this at a print shop in town and it's Friday afternoon, so too late for me to do that now. But there you go. There's my undershelf artwork. If I manage to export it as uh, Illustrator, I will. And then if you open it or import it into a software that um, imports Illustrator, many of them do, you can make changes if you wish. So there you have it. There's my undershelf modular unit, 
one of many. I'm going to read you all of them. There is one, which is the workshop app, which I'm going to have to do a, um, a wider one, about 20 centimeters, because that will definitely not fit on the 12 centimeter one. But the idea is to keep everything uniform and neat and um, easily removable if I want to change anything inside or replace it with a different module, whatever it is I want to do. And uh, as I said, if you want to build it yourself, go to the uh, shared folder in the description below and you can get all the files and do it yourself, order from PCBWay. You can get these printed anywhere you like. I'm providing the print files. These things came from PCBWay. They do end up being a bit expensive because of the shipping and so on but it's up to you, totally up to you. So I do hope you've enjoyed that. If you have, click like, share, subscribe and all that jazz. And if you want to support the channel directly, you can do so on Patreon, PayPal. Links are in the description below. So once again, thanks for watching. Bye for now. Most of all, stay sane.